Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be doing a video that I am so, so excited to be filming right now. I have been planning and scripting this video for a couple weeks now and I am so excited to be sitting down and actually filming it. Today we are going to be talking about how I became a Swifty. This is seriously one of the most requested videos, questions that I get on my Instagram, in my comment section on YouTube, is like how I discovered Taylor Swift and how did it lead to all of this. So that is what we are going to be talking about today. I am so, so excited. If you are new, hi, my name is Alexis. I am a huge Taylor Swift fan. So a lot of this content on this channel is very Swifty, Taylor Swift fan related. And if you want more Swifty content, I am always active on Instagram and TikTok. Both of those are linked down below and on the screen for you. But without further ado, let's jump in to how I became a Swifty. Listen, I got a whole PowerPoint presentation, okay, that I am going to be going off of because I simply had to remember every single detail to share with you today, okay? We also have a lot of memorabilia, a lot of my very first Taylor Swift merch items. We are going to go through all of it in chronological order, of course, because I'm a very organized person. <laughs> I love me some organization. So of course, we had to begin our story in 2007. I was seven years old, love that for me. And and growing up, I was always surrounded by country music. My mom loved country music. Every single time we would be driving in the car, we would be listening to Kenny Chesney, Keith Urban, Miranda Lambert, Carrie Underwood. That was just the music that my mom loved and surrounded us with as kids. And then I also had my Thea, who's my mom's sister. She was a huge Taylor Swift fan way back in the debut era. Teardrops on My Guitar was the first song that she had heard. And so she was already a well-established Taylor Swift fan before I had even discovered who Taylor Swift was. So you could definitely say that I was in a family of Swifties already, but my very first recollection of Taylor's music was in 2007. I was about seven years old. I was at my grandparents' house and I went to my Thea's bedroom to hang out and listen to music and I asked her if she could play the song that goes, it's late and your mama don't know. <laughs> and she was like, our song? And I was like, yes, that one. And literally, the rest was history. A few years later, I actually moved with my family to Ohio. I had never lived outside of Arizona before. And so I was starting fourth grade and I remember Fearless came out and me and my mom would jam to that song every single day when she would pick me up from school. Hey Steven was my favorite song of all time at that moment in time. I always used to sing it out the car window and act like I was in a music video dedicating it to my crush Noah at the time. Noah, hope you're doing very well. But my fourth grade self loved the Fearless album. We loved it. And at that time, my mom had like one of those like CD binder books in the car that had just like plain CDs in there of like all the albums. And I actually still have the exact Fearless CD that we had in 2008, 2009 that was in my mom's car every single day after school getting put into her little CD player. And this is it. <laughs> this is the exact CD that we had in my mom's car. It's it's very, very beat up. Like I said, back in like the early 2000s, we had like those CD binder books in the car that you would just like flip through whenever you wanted to play a certain album. That's why it also doesn't have a case. But this is the exact Fearless CD that me and my mom would play in the car on repeat. So this is a very, very sentimental piece of memorabilia that I have. It helped me through a lot in fourth grade. All of all of the crushes, all of the friendship drama, you know, all the, all the things that a nine-year-old would go through, I guess. <laughs> In fourth grade, I also remember buying my first piece of Taylor Swift merch at the book fair at school, which I still actually have. This was one of the first Taylor Swift um, merch pieces that I remember owning. This was bought at the school book fair, like I said. It was called Taylor Swift, Her Song. And I remember my best friend in fourth grade once came over to my house. And I remember her saying like, I'm so jealous of you because you have all this Taylor Swift merch. But literally all I had was 
was just this book. This book was everything to me. Another little memory, in 2010, I actually got my first like actual official Taylor Swift merch as presents that year from my Thea. That year, I actually got my first guitar because if you have been a long time Swifty, you have gone through the phase of wanting to be exactly like her, okay? Don't deny it. Little 10 year old me was convinced that I would become a singer songwriter, okay? So my Thea got me my first guitar for Christmas in 2010. And along with it, she actually got me and my sister a bunch of Speak Now merch. Speak Now had just come out that year. And then she also got me debut guitar picks, which I actually still have. These debut guitar picks came in my little stocking stuffer from her. And they're the holographic guitar picks with pictures from the Tim McGraw music video, teardrops on my guitar music video. These guitar picks are still super, super cool to me. But I got them in 2010 with my first guitar. I remember my little sister, she had to be like four or five at the time. She got her own little stocking stuffer from my Thea and in there it came with the Speak Now winter hat, the Speak Now scarf, and I definitely stole those items from her later. <laughs> in my little stocking stuffer, I also got the Speak Now rubber bracelet, which I still have. I wore this a lot in middle school. And speaking of Speak Now, moving on to 2011 in our little timeline, I had a really good childhood friend at the time and her mom actually decided to buy us tickets to the Speak Now World Tour when Taylor was coming to Phoenix. This was my first concert ever. My mom actually came with me and my friend and then her mom. And I remember my Thea was so excited because my Thea actually went to her first Taylor concert in 2011 as well. She went to the Speak Now Tour in Madison Square Garden in New York. So she was so excited for us to go in Phoenix. This was also the time of the tea party at Taylor Swift concerts. And if you know, you know. So I asked my Thea if she could make me like a really sick poster to bring to the concert, which she did. She hand drew heart hands on the front of the poster with like our tour date on it and Taylor's little font. And we brought that to the show and it was amazing, beautiful. Before the show, I remember me and my friend and our moms went to the dollar store to get glow sticks because once again, we were trying to get tea party, okay? <laughs> and I remember literally buying like two packs of glow sticks and being like, we're we're so getting into the tea party. But it was literally just us, our sign, and a few glow sticks. But you know, you live and you learn. We were very hopeful at the time. But this concert was seriously a turning point for me as a fan. Like I was already in a family of Swifties. We all loved her music. But after going to this concert, it immediately, I felt like connected me with Taylor and her music even more so. I literally remember going home after this show, hanging up my poster that we took to the concert, printing out little pictures from the Speak Now tour, getting Speak Now tour posters, and like decking my room out in Speak Now tour memorabilia. And literally ever since then, my room has never been the same. It's been covered in Taylor Swift posters to this day. So that was a huge, huge turning point for me as a little 11 year old fan who just like felt super connected after that show, which is actually like really beautiful to look back on. What also happened in 2011 is I made my first fan account. See, I told you that concert was a turning point for me. <laughs> and to some people's surprise, my first fan account for Taylor was actually not on Twitter. It was not on Instagram. It was actually on YouTube. I made a Taylor Swift Swifty YouTube channel in 2011. And what I did that I literally thought was was revolutionary at the time, okay? Bear with me. I decided to go to the store and get the Tiger Beat magazines, okay? And like the J14 magazines and go home and flip to the Taylor articles in the magazine and read them in front of a camera and call it a day. <laughs> and that is literally what my beginning portion of my YouTube channel was. I would literally sit in front of the camera and read the Taylor articles in the Tiger Beat J14 magazines and literally just talk about Taylor. It obviously evolved to a lot more than that, which we will get to. I ended up making a lot of different videos many years after that. I actually ended up having that YouTube channel until probably like 2015 and it evolved to doing Taylor Swift merch hauls, doing vlogs. I actually once did a Swifty morning 
morning routine, which is kind of almost like what I do now. It's very, it's a very full circle moment, but it definitely evolved from what I started it out to be, which was just reading Tiger Beat magazines and their little Taylor articles that they had. And of course, getting the posters out of those magazines and putting them on my wall, of course. Moving on to 2012, this is now almost the red era. At the very, very beginning of 2012, I decided to create a Swifty Twitter account, which is actually the exact Twitter account I have today. I also remember the red album live stream, and I remember taking my mom's computer with me to my friend's house after school. And when we got home from school, I opened up my laptop and waited for the red live stream for her to announce that her next album was red. That was like a moment that stuck out to me. And that is actually around the time that I changed my YouTube channel name to Taylor Red. So if you ever see people who have been around and in the lore for a while and they comment long live Taylor Red, that is that is where it's from. <laughs> that is a little inside joke. Moving on to 2013, this is when I went to my second ever Taylor Swift concert, the Red Tour. I actually still have my mom and my sister's tickets because they actually went with us, but they were in, I think, section 112, according to the ticket. That was $84. Oh my God, we could only dream with these prices today, okay. Anyway, these are my mom's and my sister's tickets. Me and my Thea actually got pit tickets, which was so, so exciting. I remember being so excited. I had never been to a Taylor show that close before. And for this show, I actually made my own outfit. It was a little top that said, Taylor is my world. And on the back, it said, my world is turning red. My Thea actually helped me make that, of course. And I actually recreated that outfit for the Eras tour on opening night in Glendale. I was so happy to do that and I think it turned out really, really cute. But that show was one of my favorites because I actually got to see Taylor like super, super close and it was an amazing, amazing show being there with my Thea. That was my first Taylor show that my Thea was actually with me for, so that was super exciting. Some other pretty cool, memorable things happened in the time span of like 2013, 2014. And one of those things was, like I said, I continued my YouTube channel until about like 2015. And during this time, Taylor was releasing a lot of perfumes, okay? She released Wonderstruck and Wonderstruck Enchanted in the like Speak Now, Turning Red era. And then she released Taylor by Taylor Swift. And I remember when that perfume came out, I filmed my reaction to unboxing it and I posted it on Twitter. And her team at the time, who was run under the account T Swift Fragrance, that was like her fragrance team, Taylor Nation was also present during that time. So imagine like Taylor Nation, but just for like her perfumes. <laughs> so T Swift Fragrance on Twitter actually saw those videos that I was posting and decided to repost them. They would DM me all the time. They would always retweet my YouTube stuff or like whenever I would post about the perfumes. And one day I get a DM from T Swift Fragrance. I believe it was at the end of 2013, maybe beginning of 2014. And in my DMs, they told me that they were interested in sending me a little fan package. So of course, I was like, uh, yeah, duh. And they ended up sending me the Made of Starlight Taylor by Taylor limited edition perfume box. It actually sang Starlight at the time, but it is very, very old, so it doesn't sing Starlight. It literally would sing it as you opened it. It was super cool. Anyway, so they sent me this, and it came with a little note that said, Hi, super fan. Enjoy the sneak preview of Taylor Swift's new limited edition fragrance. You are one of 12 at T Swift Fragrance super fans to get this. Don't forget to share your unboxing videos and pictures with us. P.S. Look under the box lid for a special surprise. And of course, Taylor signed it. This was, I believe my second signed item from her. In 2012, I got the signed red frame for Christmas, which I love. That was also another huge moment for me as a little Swifty because I cried opening that. That was my first autograph from Taylor ever. But this was so, so cool. I remember being like absolutely beyond myself that they decided to send me this. So that was a really, really cool thing that happened to little 13 year old me. Okay, I had to run to my closet to get this because I wanted to show you guys how funny this is. The very first time I was ever noticed by anyone in Taylor's team, was T Swift fragrance and you already know your girl has it framed okay this was literally everything to me you don't understand little 13 year old me right there she she knew she had to frame this okay it would it would be a good artifact 10 years later <laughs> also if you're wondering where some of these YouTube videos are I hate to break it to you okay I still 
regret this to this day. When I got to high school, I was so scared that people from my school would find out that I had a Taylor Swift YouTube channel. So I literally deleted every single video off that channel, which is absolutely so tragic, so tragic. But I do have some of the videos still on like my old computer, my old iPad. So I would love to do a video reacting to some of those videos. Like I still have like a ton of haul videos that I did. I still have the little video I made on iMovie called my Taylor Swift morning routine. So if you guys want me to make a video reacting to those really old YouTube videos, let me know because I definitely will. So right now we're in the beginning of 2014, moving on into middle of 2014. Another huge thing that happened during this time is I got my first Taylor notice. Taylor Swift actually commented on one of my Instagram photos on my old Instagram. It was of this photo. Let me actually read it to you. She said, Alexis, I love this picture of you. Thank you for writing me this note. Seven years is a long time to devote to a musician and it makes me so grateful and proud knowing you would do that for me. Sending you love. Are you joking? I just got chills. I literally just got chills. I remember sobbing, sobbing when I got that notification. I ran to my mom's room and I was sobbing. I actually also had a reaction video or like a video that I literally made like right after I got that comment notification and I deleted it. I have no idea where it's at. See, this is why you don't get embarrassed of what people think and you just let it be because nothing is worth other people's opinions, okay? Absolutely nothing. Anywho, moving on. Now we are moving into the rest of 2014, which now is a good time for me to answer one of the other most requested comments, most commented questions, and that is, why do you like 1989 so much? And this section will show you, okay? I accidentally just kicked my camera. I'm so sorry. I'm getting too excited over the 1989 era, okay? One of the coolest memories I have from the very beginning of the 1989 era is I actually missed school. I called out of school, okay? And I went over to my Thea's apartment and we sat in her living room and watched the 1989 or the album announcement live stream. We didn't know it was called 1989 at that point, but it was such a cool memory. I remember taking photos in my Thea's apartment bathroom before this and I painted a 13 on my hand. I think I was wearing like a debut shirt for some reason, but I was so, so excited. And also the fact that I got to get out of school for this, loved that for me. But this day was also the day that I changed my usernames on my Instagram and my Twitter account to those 1989 curls. Before that, it was those Swift curls. And once we realized that TS5 was indeed called 1989, I decided to change all of my usernames to those 1989 curls, which RIP, that Instagram was like my pride and joy. I still have that username on Twitter, but that was, that was an era. That was an era. Also around this time, my Thea was actually moving to New York. And so we decided to plan a New York trip for her to look for apartments and then to also maybe do some release week activities because Taylor was known for doing a lot of press events in New York City ahead of an album release. So what we did was we planned this trip for when we knew 1989 was releasing. So we went to New York for 1989 release week, which was the first time I had ever been to New York, okay? And the fact that it was a New York album, it went went very perfectly. And we actually waited outside of Good Morning America the day that 1989 was released because we knew Taylor was set to do an interview there. And Taylor being the wonderful human being that she is, she actually came out and said hi to everyone who was waiting out there, which was how I met her the first time. I was 14 at this time. I remember sobbing afterwards, which I think is it's on TV, <laughs> which Love that for me, I guess. I didn't know that they were filming that like clip of Taylor meeting fans outside of Good Morning America, but it actually aired on Thanksgiving, which was like a month after we had met her. So imagine me sitting in my grandparents' kitchen, okay? Eating some Thanksgiving dinner in 2014 and then hearing me meeting Taylor Swift on the TV. <laughs> I was beyond myself, okay? What, what a time. And also a month after that Thanksgiving fiasco, Taylor actually followed me on Tumblr in December of 2014, I believe it was Christmas Eve Eve. So the day before Christmas Eve, I remember being up at like 11 p.m. and seeing that follow notification. I was, I was beside myself. I was so 
so happy. This was also her Tumblr era, which was iconic. So after she had followed me for uh, many years that she was active on Tumblr, she did like a lot of my Tumblr posts, which that era was something else, okay? <laughs> the following year in 2015, we actually got tickets to the 1989 World Tour when it came to Arizona. My Thea actually got me pit tickets again, which was so, so exciting. Me and my Thea were in the pit for the, oh, <laughs> excuse me. I'm telling a very intense story. That tour is still my favorite tour she's ever done. I might be a little bit biased, but hey. Sue me, okay? I also started high school in this era. By the time we went to the 1989 World Tour, I was ending my freshman year of high school. This album, let me just tell you, came out at the perfect, perfect time, okay? With everything that I was going through my freshman year of high school, this album coincided with my life pretty spot on situation ship and all okay i literally remember listening to clean every single day on the bus ride home in freshman year of high school which is why i think clean just has such a special place in my heart and why it's my all-time favorite taylor swift song i just love that song so so much so the 1989 era was filled of very very memorable things in my swifty life okay it was it was amazing moving on past the 1989 era we we all know what happened next. Taylor went on a hiatus right before Reputation. I was still very active on social media during this time awaiting what would be Reputation. But when Reputation was officially announced, me and my Thea, we went back to New York, baby. We went to New York for Reputation release week. This was actually so, so much fun. My grandparents actually came with us, which was so fun. And then I actually ended up getting tickets with my Thea, my mom, Mom, my best friend from high school, my two sisters, all on the floor for the Reputation Stadium tour. This was actually my first time being on the floor, not in the pit. And it was an amazing experience. Rep tour on the floor was so, so good. And we were actually right by the second B stage. So it was such, it was such good seats. I loved those seats. And me and my best friend from high school had the best time ever. I actually went with her to one of the LA Eras tour shows. So we got to experience another Taylor show together which was amazing the year we went to the reputation tour in 2018 was actually my year of graduating from high school so that was very exciting and very monumental it was also my first time voting in an election which is very very important to me and Taylor actually took a stance that year in the midterms and she was posting a lot of people on her story especially first-time voters going out and voting for the first time I posted on my Taylor fan account on Instagram that I was a first-time voter with my my little sticker and she actually reposted me on her Instagram story which was so so amazing and such a monumental time just like in the world and the fact that she was taking a stance was just amazing and it was my first time voting so it was super special so that was something crazy that happened during the reputation era as well and after the reputation era of course we move on to the lover era and when I say Taylor Swift literally reads my diary and tracks my entire life lover is no exception from that okay this girl stopped me. So in 2019, Taylor is starting to tease the Lover album and literally, quite literally, just a few days after my first date with my now husband, Taylor releases a countdown for what is the lover era. <laughs> I can't make this stuff up guys, I swear. And moving into more of the lover era, my husband was actually in the military at this time and he was going through boot camp. And if anyone knows about the US Navy boot camp, okay? You can't like text them, you can't like call them whenever you wanted. We only could communicate through handwritten letters, okay? Which is what we did. And then a few months into boot camp, you can go to the graduation and see them. The day that I am getting ready to go to my husband's or my then boyfriend's graduation the first time I am seeing him in three months after communicating only through letters. That is the day Taylor releases Lover as a single. <laughs> I literally listened to Lover from the Lover album the morning I was getting ready to go see my now husband graduate from boot camp for the first time with not seeing him for three months. Taylor also liked a few of my Tumblr posts during the Lover era, which was also very exciting. And then, of course, we did get Lover Fest tickets. It was supposed to be me, my Thea, my mom, my sister. Unfortunately, that did not happen. And then we moved into the COVID-19 months. 
which also happened to be the era of folklore and evermore it's so funny because i remember vividly when my mom came into my room when folklore was announced it was literally like 6 a.m because we live in arizona it was very very early here when she announced it she came into my room and she was like taylor swift releasing an album and i was like you're lying literally half awake like when i open i was like huh and then she literally did the same thing a few months later for evermore i remember vividly when she came in to tell me about evermore i woke up again at 6 a.m my mom pounded on my door and i literally like once she told me i sat up from my bed and i was like are you freaking kidding me and grabbed my phone because taylor Swift is so unpredictable okay but it was seriously and i mean this with like the bottom of my heart and also i could probably attest to everyone kind of feeling this way at the time folklore and evermore were so needed for this time like i personally was going through a lot of anxiety with everything happening in the world and it was just a really hard time in general for everybody and so when i say like i needed those albums i seriously mean it I needed them. Moving on to the re-recording era, we are now getting more present times. In 2021, I actually moved to Japan. Me and my husband were living out there because he was in the military, and I actually got to spend Fearless Taylor's version and Red Taylor's version release weeks out in Japan, which was so, so much fun. For Red Taylor's version especially, they still did like the Starbucks drink. They did like the whole shebang. So I got to go to Starbucks on release day, get the CD, get the little coffee, and it was such a fun relaxing time i remember like that day was like one of my favorites that we had out there and it was actually my first time having my husband come with me on like these little release week festivities which was a lot of fun this was also around the time that i started tiktok which has kind of changed a lot for me because i met so many of my friends that i still like are literally some of my best friends in my life through being on TikTok and being more immersed into the ever-growing community and just all of it. It was it was a really great era. And it was a great thing for me to start in Japan because I was bored, <laughs> I was lonely, and I had nothing better to do with my time than make Taylor Swift TikToks all day. But it was so much fun seeing all of the Swifties go on TikTok and start making videos. And then obviously Taylor was very, very present on TikTok when she first got it. Like the Red Taylor's version era was so much fun on TikTok. Midnight's and Ended up coming out which was so shocking I remember watching the VMAs when she announced midnight and I was on a VPN trying to get it live while I was in Japan <laughs> and I remember being so so shocked I remember back at that time we were still anticipating reputation Taylor's version to come out which what's new i guess so for her to release like a brand new album i remember being so shocked but i spent midnight's release week in japan as well i decorated our little room in our house with like all the midnight's decorations i remember taylor commented on one of my tiktoks during the midnight's fiasco and it was just so so much fun now moving into more of the present years we moved back home last year in 2023 i ended up getting to go to a few era shows last summer when she came to Arizona and LA and it was just so so much fun speak now Taylor's version came out I got to spend speak now Taylor's version release week at the Eras tour and then also with some of my best friends that I made through the Swifty community and then 1989 Taylor's version came out which was literally amazing ha getting to experience the 1989 era again after 10 years and after it served me so well when it originally came out to then get to experience it again with even more memories and more of such crazy events happening like that was such a full circle moment and seriously like healed my high school self i also got invited to the heiress tour film premiere all those years of me having a taylor fan account and being present in the community tweeting taylor nation keeping up with everything literally 11 years after i made my first fan account i finally got a dm from taylor nation inviting me to the heiress tour film premiere which happened to be a couple weeks before 1989 taylor's version was released again and i happened to reunite with taylor getting a little selfie with her at the heiress tour film premiere in the 1989 era but this time 10 years later it was seriously like sometimes i think about those little key things like full circle moments 
moments that I'm like, how? How did that happen? I actually have a video that I filmed a couple days after I got home from the Eras Tour film premiere talking about all of it. So if you want to go watch that, feel free. I sometimes rewatch that video when I'm wanting to be nostalgic because it's just crazy. And now we are in the Tortured Poets Department era. I actually spent the Tortured Poets Department release week with my friends and that was the best time ever. Taylor actually liked one of our reaction videos, which was super cool. And now I am going to the Eras Tour in Miami this October, which is very, very exciting. It is actually going to be like a week after the one year anniversary of the Eras Tour film premiere, which I think will be very, very full circle and that is it that is my swifty story and i think the big takeaway from all of this really should be that i think for every taylor swift fan there is a reason why we feel so connected with her or her music and for me there was a lot of stuff going on in the years that we just talked about and in the midst of all of that i can look at all of the beautiful wonderful super cool memories memories and things that happened within those years and having Taylor and her music single-handedly is the reason I made it through all of that. Her, her music, that is the reason why I am who I am and why I can look back on those years and focus on the really amazing things that she brought into my life. And I think that is the most beautiful thing about being a Swifty or any Taylor Swift fan in any capacity. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys for sitting through all of this and reminiscing with me. I seriously love sitting here and talking about all of these memories. They seriously are some of the best memories of my life. If you haven't already, please subscribe and if you want to follow me on my Twitter or Instagram or TikTok or Pinterest, any of those things, they will be linked on the screen and down below for you. But I hope you guys have the best day in the entire world and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!